welcome back this video will be talking about the different water quality parameters not only the treatment of water is more important but before we going for the appropriate treatment systems you should also know what are the quality parameters and what is the magnitude of those parameters how much we can reduce the uh, level of the parameters then only we go for appropriate treatment systems if you look at the water sources and the quality parameters which are available in nature what we are having is uh, 75% of water is there on earth 25% is on the land but if you see the drinking water availability is very very less 1% both surface and ground water the remaining is there in the glaciers the water availability in the earth is it depends on the hydrologic cycle so this we know that the water gets evaporated from surface water bodies and from transpiration to the vegetation it will get uh, condensed in the atmosphere and comes out in the form of precipitation thereby the cycle goes the different water sources are classified as uh, rain water surface water ground water maybe some recycled water so what exactly are these rain water is what is obtaining here and surface water is nothing but in the form of lakes ponds rivers ground water will be in the form of wells infiltration galleries springs the recycled water means uh, you are uh, treating this uh, waste water and then recycling it for putting into beneficial use but what exactly is the quality of these uh, water sources there is a point of question now the rain water we uh, once upon a time we assumed that it's a purest form because uh, the water from the atmosphere is getting condensed and then come after evaporation and then falling back on the earth but now because of so much of atmospheric pollution air pollution and other uh, different sorts of pollution problems in the upper layers so this rain water is now fed up with uh, a lot of dissolved gases particulates salts and dissolved chemicals similarly surface water is having its waste uh, water sources from domestic uh, sources industrial sources and then uh, agricultural waste water storm water all these things they are now entering into surface water bodies because of which the surface water is having a lot of suspended material dissolved chemicals pesticides biological matter and heavy metals the ground water here the water is percolated to the subsoil but here the carbonates chlorides dissolved gases heavy metals septic tank leaches or the waste sources particularly wherever the sea water intrusion salt water intrusion in the coastal areas or near the areas where the aquaculture uh, plants are practiced you are going to have a lot of uh, salt content in that water the septic tank leakages is another problem which is coming here and more importantly the leakages coming from uh, the waste for the solid waste dumps the leachate of the solid waste dumps which goes uh, into subsoil and enters into the groundwater there is also a possibility of the ground water contamination the recycled water quality depends on the degree of treatment uh, given to this uh, uh, water under treatment systems if you see the requirements of water for domestic use it should be colorless it should be odorless it should be free from harmful salts dissolved gases objectionable minerals it should be free from dangerous heavy metals such as cadmium arsenic and lead they mainly they are coming from industrial uh, waste waters 
joining the surface water bodies. It should be free from salts, hardness, and fluorides. It should also be free from bacterial contamination. The types of impurities, now we can classify based on the nature. It can be color, uh, there's a physical impurities, chemical impurities, bacteriological impurities. So color, turbidity, temperature, taste, and odor, they're mainly classified as physical impurities. Because these impurities, uh, they can be recognized by the physical appearance in the water. Chemical, mainly due to the dissolved chemicals in the water, the acidity, alkalinity, hardness, chlorides, the contents are going to change. They have to be determined uh, through analytical um, procedures. In the bacteriological, we are having coliform index and MPN, most probable number. The classification of the impurities, the impurities also can be classified. They can be suspended, they can be dissolved, and they can be colloidal. The suspended particles predominantly, they cause uh, color uh, change, or they also cause stability. So silt, clay, algae, etc., they are going to be uh, cause uh, some turbidity because they are suspended in the water. The dissolved, they are invisible, we can't see them. It gives the changes in the quality of water and give, maybe giving the taste to the water. Again, iron and manganese, if they are present, they give some change in the color. So like this, uh, this is how we talk about dissolved impurities. Colloidal, electrically charged, and usually they are less than one micron size. The water quality parameters, they are prescribed under uh, IS 10,500, 2012 for drinking water quality standards. Now you can see this is the extract of extract of uh, the uh, IS 10500 2012. And here I'm mainly showing some of the physical chemical characteristics, color, odor, pH, taste, turbidity. So then we are having two limits. One is acceptable limit in general, and in the absence of any other source, the upper permissible limit. So preferably the acceptable limit is only considered and only in the rare uh, circumstances, we talk about the permissible limit in the alternate sources. So all the parameters, major parameters are classified. And in this video, we'll mainly talk about the physical, physical parameters, like color, order, taste, turbidity. So now you'll see the first one is uh, the color. The color is introduced into the water due to the leaves, logs, inorganics, and organic materials. Iron will give you brown color. Manganese will give you pink color to the water, particularly during a, a rainy season. Because of high floods, there's going to be Soil erosion that is going to give you very reddish brown color to the water. How you are going to detect it is measured using hazen or cobalt uh, platinum scale. So cobalt platinum scale is what? A color formed by one milligram of cobalt chloride and chloroplatinate in one liter of distilled water is taken as a standard color. And what are the sample water color is uh, compared you can see here, uh, this is 100 units and this is 500 units. So you can see a different uh, ranges of these colors and appropriate concentrations are also mentioned here. So usually we measure through a colorimeter or uh, a visual observations. Impacts, no specific, but highly objectionable. Physical impurities, turbidity. Turbidity is mainly caused by suspended particles that obstruct the flow of light through them. That means when the suspended particles are more, when you see the water, uh, the, the opposite side through that water uh, bottle, we can't see clearly. That is uh, obstructing the line of vision through that bottle because of suspended impurities. It means optical properties disturbed. 
passage of light, particularly noticed during floods because a high amount of suspended material is there during that particular period. So detection, mainly interference of light through the water, higher is the interference, higher is the turbidity. So when there's no turbidity, light can easily pass and we can see the outside of, of just the other side of the glass bottle. We can't see that means the turbidity is present. So we are having the three different methods, tape method, chalks and candle method, and nephilometer method. So tape method is now obsolete. Jocks and candle method is also not used rarely nowadays because of electronic gadgets. We are going to mainly talk about the nephilometric method. The nephilometer method, if you see, the light is passed through the sample. You can see in this method, turbidity meter, a nephilometer. The light is passed here and unwanted light is filtered. And you are keeping a water in a small cell, sample cell that you are observing. If the more turbidity is there, the light will get absorbed. These particles will absorb that light. So how much is the light absorbed? That is taken as an indication of the amount of turbidity present that is displayed in the readout device. That's what it is. This is the instrument which we are going to use for measuring the turbidity. This is called a nephilometer. Now here, uh, we open this door, and then we have a slot we can keep uh, a small covet, uh, there's a small glass tube filled with water. And now we are adjusting these knobs, we'll get uh, the turbidity value here in the readout device. And the treat the unit is measured as uh, NTU. NTU stands for nephilometric turbidity units. Preferably, uh, it should be less than one NTU. The impacts, if you look at, uh, if you don't want to drink uh, the turbid water, so aesthetic reasons are there. So uh, once upon a time, before this electronic gadget, this is also used, this is called Jackson candle method. We are keeping a candle below a stand, and then we're keeping a, a glass jar here with the graduated uh, values. And some readings will be there. And you will be filling this water, slowly you'll filling this water, and you observe the intensity of the light through this jar. When the turbidity is less, you will be seeing uh, this uh, light to a larger depth of water in the jar. If the turbidity is more, the light available, the appearance of this light, the visibility of this light through this jar will stop at some intermediate depth of the water. The corresponding reading on this uh, jar is taken as indication of the turbidity. So this is a candle method. This is a Jackson method. That's why called as a Jackson candle turbidity meter. And the units measured under this method, they are called as Jackson turbidity units. But nowadays, this is obsolete. This is not used. We are mainly using only this nephilometer. Temperature. Temperature is uh, more important here in the water. Normally, surface water temperatures are less than 20 centigrade. And how the water temperature is increased, the cooking operations coming from the houses, they have hot, hot waters and domestic uses. So this will enter through the drain and so go into surface water. Similarly, industrial wastewater, they are discharged into surface water bodies. There, some amount of high temperature is, reduced, is noticed. So it shows that high temperature means there is some contamination and some external wastewater is now introduced into the water with high temperature. And usually, we detect with a the thermometer. So number of thermometers are there. So this is an analog thermometer, which is normally used, mercury-based thermometer. Nowadays, we are having a number of uh, different other thermometers. Digital, this is the sensor. You are keeping this in the water. The temperature is displayed directly in the readout. So this is another modified version or updated version. And you can see this is the electrode. You keep dip it in the water, and uh, the temperature is displayed here either in centigrade or foreign heat, uh, as per the choice of the display. But here, the most important thing is the water contains dissolved oxygen, oxygen dissolved state. 
this dissolved oxygen is more important for the survival of fish, uh, prawn, and other aquaculture species. If lesser dissolved oxygen is there, these aquaculture species cannot survive. So higher is the temperature of the water, lesser will be the dissolved oxygen. That's why we have to see that uh, the water temperature should not be very high. This dissolved oxygen is also having some saturation value at different temperatures. This is tabulated in all the standard uh, records. At 20 centigrade uh, of water, the saturation temperature, saturation value of the DO is around 9.2 milligrams per liter. So DO of uh, this water should at any time uh, not go below the 4 milligrams per liter. Otherwise, what will happen is oxygen content is reduced. Instead of aerobic conditions, anaerobic conditions are introduced into the water, they are developed. And subsequently, what you are going to see is uh, the uh, destruction of the aquatic species and some unhygienic conditions are developed in the water. The anaerobic conditions means the unwanted gases, bad odor gases, they'll start emitting. And that is an unwanted sign in the drinking water situations. The third one is uh, the taste and order. The water should not have any taste, but the taste comes through the addition of different minerals and uh, also caused by some salts and also due to some amount of organic matter present in the water. Water is caused by the decaying organic matter, organic chemicals, and also due to the dissolved gases which are there entering into the water, maybe due to anaerobic decomposition, as mentioned just now. And water is detected uh, using an uh, osmoscope. What we are having is, you can see here, is a Y-shaped uh, instrument. There are two small nozzles are there. And here you can see one long needle is there. So what we are going to do in this uh, osmoscope is uh, we are going to uh, take uh, the water in a small beaker. We are going to take water in a small beaker and we are introducing this into the water, the vertical portion. And these uh, nozzles are there. So two nozzles are there. So now we'll introduce this uh, in the nostrils of your nose. These are introduced into the nostrils of the nose. They're introduced in the nostrils of the nose. And then start inhaling. So there is an order is there detected through the physical methods. So the only thing is the taste should not be there and order should not be there. It is highly objectionable and aesthetic uh, problems are there if the water is having high amount of taste or order.